And there it goes. Awesome. Thank you. So it's a long title, and essentially it's going to be a new perspective on garbling. So you can see new garbling. Uh, I'm starting with a motivational picture. Um, this is the geocentric model for the solar system. You can see the Earth in the middle. The sun should be here, rotates around, and some planets do these funky orbits. But if you, so it's a complicated system, but if you change perspective, it looks pretty clean. And um, so we're going to do the same for Garblin. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the idea is we have. You know what happened to the first guy? There's the guy who. <laughs> yeah. So. He was also Italian. Yeah. So, so we're going to suffer a bit, but it's going to be a cool. 400 years after. 400 years after, you can gonna, you're going to garble pretty easily. So the idea is in 400 years, you're going to garble just using linear algebra. Essentially, linear garbling can be compared to linear secret sharing. And uh, we show that simple properties imply simulation-based security. In other words, you have simulation proofs without sim simulation proofs, essentially. It's a, kind of a neat idea. Uh, why do we need this? It's essentially because a simpler um, framework allows you to build more advanced schemes. And I'll show you a more advanced scheme later on. OK. So what is garbling? Um, I give you a circuit. If you garble a circuit, you get some encoding information. The actual garbled circuit, which is what uh, the AAK people call the offline encoding, and some decoding information. What you do with the encoding is you take an input, you garble it, and you get a garbled input. Then you can evaluate it via the garbled circuit into a garbled output, and then you can decode it and get a value. If the garbled uh, scheme is correct, you have that this diagram commutes, meaning it's equivalent to compute in the clear or in the garbled version of the circuit. And security is uh, simulation-based. We're following the Bellare Horn and Rogaway paradigm. So essentially, you want to simulate uh, the blue and the green things so the garbled circuits and the garbled input, and also the decoding, via just knowing the circuit and the output. So maybe I can write down, you want to garble uh, green, maybe another e. This is the important part. Um, good. So the focus of this talk will be on Boolean circuits. And I'm going to talk about communication complexity. So essentially. Mike gave me a very good introduction to what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to borrow his scoreboard. He listed a lot of schemes, and he listed the communication complexity they achieve in terms of uh, lambda bits. So lambda is the security parameter. As you can see, the, one, uh, the scheme with minimal uh, communication complexity is the Huffgates paper by Sammy, Mike, and uh, uh, David. David. Yes, I never remember the surname. But anyway. So can you do better? Uh, the answer is, well, if you want to garble using something that is called linear garbling, and you garble gate by gate, the answer is no. They prove that this scheme is optimal. But then you can circumvent this uh, lower bound just having not gate by gate schemes or not linear schemes. In this talk, I'm going to talk about not gate by gate schemes that are still linear. Maybe in the end, I'll talk about not linear. So our scheme is not gate by gate. And the way we approach it is by slicing the circuit in units and then garbled, garbled unit by unit. A cool feature of the scheme is that if you cut the circuit into gates, you get the half gate paper. But if you have bigger units, it's hard to prove simulation-based security. Therefore, we invented this new framework that allows you to prove things easier, more easily. Good. So I told you not gate by gate. Now I'm, I'm going to describe what linear means. And this is the slide to remember. It's, it's, uh, it took me a lot of time to write. <laughs> so intuition. 
the garbler and the evaluator just do two things. They call their random oracle and then perform linear functions. So I'm the garbler. What do I do? I sample some random values, a vector of random values. I call their random oracle because I can do that. I append these results uh, at the bottom of the, my vector of random variable, and I call this vector s. And then I do the other thing that I can do, which is apply linear functions, and uh, which means I just apply a matrix to s. And this is going to be the garbling. So you get the encoding information. This, these are the output wires, C0 and C1, and the garbled circuit. What happens next is, well, the encoding procedure applies. The encoding is nothing but a projection that projects the encoding information into the encoded, the garbled inputs. You can think of this here as being the whole set of input labels. And the green part is just the active labels. OK, so I'm now the evaluator down here. What do I do? Same thing. I apply the random oracle somewhere. And uh, it turns out that the random oracle calls that the evaluator performs are just a subset of what the garbler performs. It's, it's non-trivial, but kind of intuitive. Uh, which means that I can write down this vector as a matrix that I call G times the original vector S. Uh, so I call the random oracle. What do I do next? I apply a linear combination. And uh, the idea is I get the correct output label by just applying a linear combination of this vector here. Good. So this is the definition of linear garbling. There is a let's call it heliocentric view on this, which is, well, instead of doing this, which is um, projecting and then calling the random oracle and expanding, let's do the other way around. Let's expand first. So I just copy paste the calls that the garbler does here. Nobody performs these operations, by the way. It's, it's just a thought experiment. And then I project. It's a, a commutative diagram again. You can go. Uh, right and down, or down and right. Uh, why do I want to go right and down instead of down and right? It's because this is very similar to secret sharing. So secret sharing is this. Um, the person who shares has a random vector. Let's call it S. Uh, multiplies it by a matrix. Let's call it F. And this is the set of shares. And. Uh, Given a subset of these, um, let's call it, this is going to be GS, you can perform a linear combination on the subset of shares and get the secret back. Um, yeah, so it's essentially the same here. This is the full specification of all the set of shares. This is the subset of shares that are given to the evaluator, and this is the secret that is shared. Uh, in other words, a linear garbling scheme is nothing but a secret sharing scheme for both outputs. And um, this G matrix defines what the evaluator sees, so the shares given to the evaluator. The blue shares are fixed for both uh, outputs, and the green part will determine if you get one label or the other. Um, yeah. So that's that's the intuition. So you have, if you remember this, everything else will be easy. Good. So now I'm going to talk about something that is familiar to you, which is Yao. But I, I will interpret it in this notation. So I'm I'm going to move on the other side actually for practical reasons. Um, so <laughs> what does the garbler do in the Yao garbling? He samples uniform labels for a gate, let's say it's an AND gate, and then computes the garbling information according to the semantics of the gate. So as you, you can implement it as a linear com combination of uh, hash calls and the random variables C0 and C1. In other words, the M matrix looks like this. This is the M matrix. The M matrix was 
this. <laughs> and um, yeah, so the, the second one, the full definition of what garble means. And um, yeah, it doesn't look very good, but uh, fine. Um, yeah, can close it all. Okay, so this is the full specification of the garbling for an AND gate. And then I'll move right, so I'll do the F matrix again, which is this. So the full set of shares, and then we're going to talk about what the active shares are. So this is the full set of shares. I just appended the hash calls at the bottom of this vector. So it's pretty easy to see that if you apply the identity here, you get exactly this. And um, now I'm going to talk about green and blue again, so the garbling matrix, the G matrix. If I'm the evaluator, what I get is two input labels, let's say a 0, B1. And what I can do is I can hash the concatenation of them, and I get this. And if you combine green and blue, you get this G matrix, meaning the active shares, the active view of the evaluator. And then you just compute a linear combination, and you get, in this case, C0, which is the correct output. Um, yeah, so the linear combination that you apply is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And you sum it up, you get C0. OK, this is for a specific input. For general inputs, so for any A and B that are the inputs to the wires, I can describe the same thing. So this is, don't worry, the same thing. I just replace ones and zeros with symbolic A's and B's. So if A is 0, here you get a 1. So you get a 0, and so on. Um, it's a very convenient uh, way to express all these four matrices at once. Because essentially, we can argue about some linear properties of this matrix. And then I'll show you something interesting. So if you look at this matrix, we say that you have linear reconstruction if the correct output wire label is in the span of the green and the blue. So the view of the evaluator spans the correct output wire. And we say that if the other output wire is not in the span, you get something called linear privacy. And our theorem says these two properties are enough for simulation-based security. So essentially, write down your favorite scheme in a matrix notation, fit it to a computer that evaluates these two properties, you get simulation-based security. Good. I'm not going to show that these two properties hold on this scheme, but uh, we can warm up in another way. So. And if you have the different types of gates, that's fine. Just you need to show that all of each of the different types of gates you're putting together. Uh, um, yeah, so. And, and I have the simulation rate security holds for the entire circuit? You have to, yes, yes, that happens. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you get some sort of composability of, this, of the gates. In, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's true. Yeah. OK, so um, I'm going to show that the half gates paper is secure. It's going to be a one-slide proof. Um, so the half gates had this brilliant idea that essentially, if you secret share the input between the garbler and the, and the evaluator, you can do better than uh, anything. So remember, VA is going to be what Mike called the color bit. It's known to the evaluator. And it's nothing but the XOR of the input and the permutation bit that is chosen by the garbler. So it turns out that the G matrix, so the view of the evaluator, is the green and blue uh, part of this matrix. I omitted the vector that is multiplied by the, this, but it's, uh, it's not very important. If you're curious, I can tell you what it is in one second. Um, OK, so let's prove security. So. I want to show these two properties. And, uh, but first, notice that the output wires share a lot of entries, meaning they start with 0, 0, and they end with 1, 1, 0, 0. Now we do some easy linear algebra to show that the two properties hold. If you don't want to follow, it's OK. You just, it's easy. 
Um, okay, so let's look at, look at the second entry. Okay, so now I'm gonna write a linear combination of the green and blue. So I can't use red and purple. Therefore, I write this simple here, symbol here, just saying it's not allowed. I have to generate a zero at the second entry, just using green and blue. Green here is a one, and there's just one of them. Therefore, I have to multiply that row by zero if I want to have a zero in the second entry. Um, okay, so let's check other properties, like this one and this zero. So this zero means that this has to be multiplied by VA and this has to be multiplied by one if I want to get a one here. So this will happen. With a similar reasoning, this will happen. And I have a carry here of VB because I'm multiplying this row by VB, therefore I get a VB as a result. How do you cancel that? You just multiply by VB, the first row. Good, so what I showed is that any linear combination that starts with 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 is this. There is just one. What is the question mark? You do some math. It's the red part. It's not the purple one. This shows both correct, correctness and security. Done. You don't have to do anything else. Good. So let's move on. This is a good starting point. Um, look at this. Here, uh, we are reconstructing A times B plus PA, PB, which is quadratic in AB, just by a linear function from the evaluator's perspective on PB and PA. This is a very good thing. It's, uh, so you can observe that you can obtain A times B plus this in a clever way if you use this garbled, uh, half gate garbling. Essentially what they do is they reveal a one time pad of the inputs, the color bit, and then they can reconstruct this quantity linearly in PA and PB. It's very, very similar to Beaver's circuit randomization. And it can be extended to any polynomial relation. And this is how we, our scheme works. You use this general technique. I can show you now a matrix for garbling this polynomial. So this is how our scheme will uh, garble A and B, plus, uh, XOR A and C, XOR A and D, blah, blah, blah. So um, I'm not going to do the math, but you can trust me. <laughs> uh, the two properties hold. And um, what is interesting about this is that we have four blue rows. So four rows, good. Um, in general, for a quadratic polynomial, we have that essentially the number of rows we use to garble is the number of variables. In the early example, I showed four rows for this. And if you compare to a trivial circuit that computes the same function, and you apply the half gates paper, you get 12 rows. So essentially, if you were given the circuit A and B, X or blah, 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 you would circumvent the lower bound. However, however, you can optimize the circuit. So you can have a circuit with just two ends, and then you get exactly the same complexity. So that's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, in general, for a quadratic polynomial, there is a paper by um, Mirwald and Schnorr uh, that says that in a worst case scenario, you can, gar you can um, take a polynomial of degree two in n variables and just use m and gates, where m is the number of variables divided by two, which shows that the performance of our scheme and the half gate via this best circuit is the same. Um, more in depth of, depth of the computation. What do you mean? The, the, the circle with the MN, so it says some depth, right? What's the depth of your computation? Um, well, you take the f function as pre expressed as a polynomial, and this will be just uh, one matrix. So uh, you, the garbler just applies this matrix. It's uh, uh, the size. I can tell you the size. It's kind of a bit. So it's better. For, I mean, the, the, your your scheme is better. So yeah. Uh, so this. Yeah. 
the age that the it depends on what you mean by better. There are some metrics for which it's better in ours. So it's better in one sense that is very, very important, and I will mention it at the end also, which is the uh, essentially parallel use of hash functions. There's also another thing that is maybe minor, that if you want to compute the best circuit, it needs some time. It's like number of variables cubed. I don't know if that matters, but anyway. Uh, it's something else. Um, okay, so that's a good question. Um, in general, we have that you can garble any polynomial of degree d in n variables with this communication complexity. Uh, so it means that if you're given this polynomial, you'll get this. If you want to use the half gates, you have to find a circuit for it. And uh, it will have a number of ends and double the amount of that will be the number of rows that are needed. Um, so we have a result that says that for random constant, constant degree polynomials over n variables, um, essentially it's better to just garble it via our scheme than finding a circuit and then using the half gates because it's not clear how to find a good circuit for that metric. But if there are methods that allow you to improve, the situation might change. Yeah. So it's not very clear in uh, very general terms for communi uh, communication complexity, but there are some examples where we're better today. Um, yeah, and I think I'm running out of time, so I'll conclude with these with a summary. Uh, what I talked about is a new framework Simple span, pro simple span properties imply simulation-based security. I showed you a new Boolean garbling scheme that has nice properties. The one I didn't talk about, but Claudio hinted, is this um, parallelis parallelizability. So the calls to the random oracle are done statically for each unit. So if, if, if you have a big unit, you get much better parallelizability will perform maybe worse in terms of uh, communication complexity, but as I said earlier, it's not cle a clear situation. What I didn't tell you about is that we also can extend this to arithmetic circuits. And we have a, an interesting result for small finite fields. Uh, I mean, it's a general arithmetic, arithmetic garbling scheme, but it performs very well for small fields. And we also have an extension for general MPC that uses uh, beaver-based uh, approaches like speeds or these things. Um, and then, so this is all done. There are some ideas about nonlinear garbling, and um, I'm very happy to talk about these if you're interested. This is a, the ideas are summarized by these two pictures, and if you're interested, we can talk about this. Thanks. Questions? Yeah, so the arithmetic garbling scheme, you said it, it performs well for small finite fields. So what, what, what did you mean? What's the performance here? And so um, I'm still talking about the size of the garble circuit. Um, one method you can think to garble arithmetically is convert it into a binary circuit and then garble. If you do that, essentially our scheme compares better if, this, if, if the field is small. Uh, yeah, The size of the circuit depends linearly on the size of the field, and this can be bad. Do you have, you have to generate like a you know, a label for each of the field elements or something like that? For each um, yeah. Sort of. You don't have to do it explicitly, but it turns out that it will be a bottleneck at the end. Exactly what you said will be a bottleneck, yeah. Okay, thank you.